In this season of The Big Talk, you are going to have access to the most incredible speakers who recently performed at the virtual showcase, which is the culmination of The Big Talk Academy, my 12-week signature speaker training. Be sure to watch every single one of these speakers in this series because they are all equally as inspiring, entertaining, and powerful. And by sharing their important messages, they can change and even save a life. Enjoy. Dr. Yuri Nakasato, a Harvard graduate. He's an award winner of the prestigious Leadership Bush Fellow. Besides taking care of patients, he's the author of a book in rheumatology, a change in management expert, a certified Gestalt coach, a COVID frontline worker, and a crooner as featured on TV. And he is joining us from Fargo, North Dakota. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Yuri Nakasato with a singing prescription to cure the soul. To fight or to fly? That is the question. The fight or flight is an automatic physiologic response to an event that is perceived as stressful or as frightening. During the Stone Age, the caveman perceived or spotted a tiger. His stress hormones went up, cortisol and adrenaline, and he ran out for safety until the tiger was gone. Those stress hormones normalized and he ventured out in search for food. This cycle went over many times over. Fast forward to the modern age. The tiger is COVID-19. People were so afraid that they ran out, they'd run for toilet paper. The stock market plummeted overnight. The worst fear is fear itself. Frank Delano Roosevelt said that. And remember, there was no treatment, no PPE, there was no vaccine, there was this sense of loss of control, and there was a lot of uncertainty. So this is, it felt like 9-11, the firefighters were going into the building in flames while the rest of the people were going out, running for their lives. With this daily sense of my own mortality, I pose myself this question, should I fly or should I fight? Well, I decided to fight, but it took a price. One day I found myself sweating profusely. I had to change my undershirts by the hour. There was this lack of concentration there was voracious appetite, weight gain, increased pulse, increased blood pressure, mood swings, sleep issues, and on and on for weeks. Stress. And it was causing me anxiety. And at this pace, I was going to get depression, PTSD, or maybe a heart attack. So, you know, during these times, I tend to lean on my family and my friends the world was upside down. We were socially distanced. So it felt like my soul was sick. Viktor Frankl, he was a Holocaust survivor. He wrote a book, Man in Search of Meaning, and he said this, very powerful. You cannot control adversity, but you can control how you feel about it. So how can we make this frightening situation feel less stressful. The um, American Psychology Association uh, did a survey in 2020, and he found that um, a lot of 50% of the respondents use music to cope with the stress. Music, interesting. So the body m must have these innate mechanisms to dodge the stress bullets. What about singing? We produce our own sounds and our, our, our own music. Emmanuel Kant, a philosopher, he said that if it doesn't offer a survival advantage, then why do we sing? So I took, on, I took up uh, singing lessons in 2018 when they asked my motivation. I said, well, I just want to sing like Elvis. That was 
the extent of my interest. But with COVID-19, singing took a life on its own. I noticed that during the vocal virtual sessions, I was calmer, it acted as a tranquilizer, and it translated in my work. I'm, I was more effective and more focused on what the things that I was doing. Noticing these immediate benefits, I said, well, I'm gonna take more lessons, and I did. And then I move on, I said, well, I'm gonna create a YouTube channel and I'm gonna call myself the singing doctor. I'm serious about this. Rather than being the better of bad news telling my friends and family, hey, this is the situation is very bad. I said, I'm gonna give them hope. So I sang and sang. Two months later, I was featured on the local TV news with these headlines. How a doctor cope with the stress through music. Doctor, I saw you on TV, the patient said the following day and the following week and the following month. It looks like they were enjoying the fact that his doctor was singing. Well, if the doctor is singing, everything is going to be all right, right? So the benefits of music are well known. Research have shown that it can help dementia patients remember. It can help Parkinson patients to walk or even dance. It can help people who stutter to talk. It can do that because it fires different regions of the brain that we cannot do in otherwise. It's like a whole brain workout. It also has shown that um, under the right conditions, it can help depression and it can help anxiety. And research has shown too that in people who have been exposed to music for many decades, it can improve the connections between the right and the left brain. That's got to offer some um, capabilities with problem solving. And research has shown too that it improved the brain, brain plasticity and improved the cognitive function. And this flexibility of the brain translate into old age. Well, singing is kind of more interactive. You know, singing um, involves the thoracic cage and the diaphragm. When we take these, those deep breathings to produce those beautiful sustained sounds as we saw on, on the singer at the beginning of this uh, session, um, it stimulates the parasympathetic system which reduces the cortisol and adrenaline which are the stress hormones. Um, it also increases the endorphin which alleviates the pain. And singing is, is like a social lubricant. We sing in groups, we sing in the stadiums, in the concerts, um, it makes us happy because it, it releases a dopamine, the happy uh, hormone or neurotransmitter. So all together, it also improves the oxytocin, which improves our empathy and our bonding. So it makes us better listeners. So along with music, it improves our intelligence, IQ, and improves our emotional intelligence, EQ. And that EQ is important for leadership. Shackleton in his ill-fated expedition in 1915 showed that he was able to save his whole crew despite being trapped in the ice in the worst frigid conditions on earth for two years, two years. How, how were they able to keep this morale high? Well, he did two things. One, he kept them busy. And two, he kept them singing. In fact, the crew members remember that when they were recruited, one of the questions was, can you sing? And when the, when the ship was crashing under the weight of the ice, he ordered the crews to abandon ship. But he said, you can take up to two pounds of your personal belonging, but he made an exception. It was a 12 pound banjo for the navigator. It's a vital mental medicine. We may need it when we run out of food. So in summary, doctors may said, eat better, eat less, and exercise more. Well, a healthy body will keep a healthy mind. Makes sense. But if you want a pill or a medication that decreases stress by decreasing cortisol and adrenaline and improve the dopamine, make you happier. 
and make you more socially able by improving your oxytocin and improve your IQ and your EQ, well, follow this prescription. Sleep better, love and laugh more, and sing as much as you can. This is my prescription to cure this all. Thank you. If you desire to be on the virtual showcase stage, hop on over to thebigtalkacademy.com and register now for my 12-week signature speaker training, where you can become certified by the Big Talk Academy and perform on my virtual showcase stage. And if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscription button and notification bell, and definitely share your thoughts in the comments. I will respond to each and every one of you. Big love. <laughs>